So this black Latina journalist, or actually she's a Afro Colombian. She gets her nigga wake up call while she's interviewing this troglodyte Neanderthal who calls himself a KKK leader, Christopher Barker, uh, the leader of the loyal white knights, as you can see here. I'm about to play the clip. As you can see, also, he's in his natural habitat because, we you know, these these type of troglodytes, they belong in caves. That's their natural habitat. So he's right. He's he feels right at home. <laughs> he's be, he's being interviewed outside in his natural habitat with these damn uh, <clears throat> his white supremacist garb, the KKK patches and all that stuff. But this uh, <clears throat> this chick. Her name is uh, the the Afro-Colombian reporter. Her name is Ilia Calderon. Um, this chick is fairly attractive. I checked. I got I got her IG page up. Um, and she's a reporter for Univision. And um, I'm about to play the clip, family, and I'm gonna come back with my commentary because this is uh, quite interesting. All right, so I'm gonna play the clip right now and uh, offer you guys my commentary. Here you go. Why don't you go back? If you love your country, why are you coming up here, Texas dog? If you I go back all the time. I hear all y'all people say, scream, we do the jobs nobody wants to do. We have nothing here in America. Y'all keep flooding it. But like God said, Yahweh himself says, we will chase you out of here, and it's going to be a thorn. Are you going to chase me out of here? No, we're going to burn you out. All right, let me, let me pause it real quick. So, you know, this, this, uh, this troglodyte devil, this Neanderthal, quotes the Bible. It says, Yahweh. OK, so we, you guys know that the institution of religion was forced upon us by white supremacists. We know this. OK, I know I got some Hebrew Israelites, you know, subscribe to my channel, but that's the reality. OK, so these White supremacists, these Ku Klux Klan guys like this guy, Christopher Barker, is always going to quote the same deity that you claim. Right. Out of the same Bible, out of the same book that you guys read. OK, <clears throat> that's the that's the thing I talk about. That's part of a mental disorder called cognitive dissonance. When you're presented with actual facts of things that actually happen. And. You still conclude, well, you know, it's not true. You have your own, you, you stick with, you stick with your guns is basically what I'm trying to say. You, you stick with your guns and you, you're not, you're not moved or persuaded by actual evidence that actually happened. Your ancestors were forced and taught this Abrahamic religion, henotheism which is Christianity, which is what these white supremacists use, like Christopher Barker and, you know, the KKK and all that stuff. That's what they do. <clears throat> so let me continue to play the video as this troglodyte continues to show who he is. He, I, I like these overt white supremacists, man. You know, just show you who they are right in this natural habitat, right in this damn cave dwelling atmosphere. I like that. You know what I'm saying? But let me continue to play the video. Are you going to burn me out? How are you going to do it? How are you going to do with 11 million immigrants? Don't matter. Hey, we Why killed 6 million Jews the last time. How are you? You're, you're, you're telling nothing. me that you're going to burn me. Yeah. No. You should threat. come my property now. Yes, it is your property. Yeah. And I do understand that I'm probably the first black person immigrant here in your property. Well, first off, said you're Cuban. Or whatever. To me, you're a nigger. That's it. Watch your mouth. That's it. <laughs> Hold on. Was that his wife saying, watch your mouth? So <laughs> wait a minute. So I think the, the troglodyte wife said, watch your mouth. I believe that was her. So there's a level of <laughs> there's a level of tolerance to name calling and being as overt racist as possible. There's a level to that, right? There's different levels. Oh, don't don't say that. <laughs> You're just a nigger to me. <laughs> Dude said, uh, you're Cuban. You're just a nigger to me, right? And so, you know, that's the, like I said, man, I like this guy. 
as him being overt. We know who he is. He's a damn white supremacist. He's a troglodyte. That's who he is. Show me your true colors, right? These are our enemies. These are our oppressors. This is exactly what it is. And um, <clears throat> the thing about also what he said was uh, <laughs> was very interesting when he's talking about I don't care what you are. I see you as a nigger. Right. And, you know, I talked about also about how white supremacy redefines itself. It always redefines itself because the white supremacists, they continue to change the narrative of their code. They follow their own white supremacist code, but they continue to uh, evolve and change their own narrative in, in terms to their code. So his way of thinking as an overt white supremacist. That's like Windows 95. It's antiquated. Nobody really does that kind of thing anymore. It's not as it's not as acceptable in today's society as it was during the Jim Crow era, Reconstruction, stuff like that. Right. So he's like he's very he has an antiquated way of showing that he's a white supremacist, you know, with the re with the uh, evolved versions of white supremacists like alt right. Uh, you know, the richest printers, the Steve Banners of the world, that's who you're dealing with, right? And these, you know, these particular uh, white owned, you know, mainstream media companies like a Fox News, etc., they continue to push and control the narrative of supporting white supremacist ideology, right? So, <clears throat> with that being said, you know, this guy, Christopher Barker, uh, and guys like him who have this overt white supremacist ideology, this is starting to come back now. It's starting to be it's starting to be more acceptable. Why? Because of a guy named number forty five, Donald Trump. Both sides is what he says. Alt left, but he's enabling this type of behavior. You you, you are enabling this overt white supremacist ideology way of thinking, this troglodyte Neanderthal type of behavior. This is what is being accepted right now. It's, 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 it's again, it's old to the new, to the new, to the old. It's always evolving. It's always changing, you know? So you have different facets of, of white supremacists out there. Let me continue to play the video. I find that I I find that offensive, and I don't think you need to go that because my skin color doesn't define me. Okay, so right there, she said her skin color doesn't define her, right? She just got her wake up call. And I know, you know, I don't know. I, I would assume that she had to think about what she said after the interview. Like, this man just called me a nigger on live television. Now, I'm pretty sure she's a journalist. If she's been doing these kind of interviews before with these particular white supremacists, maybe she maybe she has been called a nigger. You know, you know, maybe she hasn't. I don't know. But this right here, you know, being said you'll be burned down by this white supremacist troglodyte, calling her a nigger, right? Just just basically defaming her or us, I should say, us as as people classified as black or African American. She's Afro Colombian. Um being disrespected on live television or during an interview doesn't matter how many times you've done it. It's still it's it's still humiliating. It is. It's still humiliating. Coming from a troglodyte white supremacist Neanderthal cave builder like this guy Christopher Barker, right? But her saying, you know, my skin tone or my skin color doesn't define me. Again, when you have that way of thinking and you're proven wrong by a white supremacist because all he sees you are as a nigger, as somebody black, you got to double check yourself like, well, maybe, well maybe, my, maybe my skin tone does define who I am. You know, you can't have this way of thinking like, well, we live in a post-racial America because that's, that's a complete lie and a misnomer, right? You got... Negro coons 
out in Fox News sympathizing and, and begging and pleading white supremacists to <laughs> be shocked about their narrative of supporting other white supremacists during that uh, white supremacist pep rally in Charlottesville, Virginia. That 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 guy, I saw a video about about that guy on uh, Fox News crying and, and being uh, appalled about Donald Trump supporting, you know, white supremacists during the Charlottesville, Virginia uh, pep rally they had over there last week. Right. So. Like I said, man. You're going to get your wake up call any day in time. I think this chick, uh, Elia Calderon, she got a wake up call. And I know she, I know, uh, I wouldn't say I know, like I said, I, I would expect that what she said about her skin, her color doesn't define who she is. She had to think twice about that. You know, because white supremacists, they only see you for one thing. And that's your melanin. That's who you are. That defines you. Because if it didn't, <laughs> if it didn't, we wouldn't be in the position we are in today, collectively as a group. If our skin tone didn't matter, we would not be in the position we are in today. <laughs> collectively, straight up. All right. Over 500 years. Of oppression onslaught you name it since the inception of the transatlantic slave chain in 1505 you know what I'm saying so like I said this chick uh, Ilya Calderon she got a wake up call and I would, I would suspect she learned from this interview and now she understands who she is. That she's black. Okay. <laughs> and her skin tone. It defines her. It defines us collectively as a group. It is who we are. We got to accept that. We got to embrace that. All right. <laughs> so. Anyway, family, those are my thoughts on that. Leave your comments down below about this interview. Uh, let me know what you guys think. Uh. Oh, uh, this is her Instagram page here. Uh, I believe she's married to a uh, Asian dude. She got she got kids, but she don't. She looks fairly pretty damn good for her age. She's forty five. Uh, yeah, I think this is her kid right here. These are her kids uh, right here, or something like that. Where is the dude? I saw a picture of her husband. Let me see. Where is it at? Well, anyway, y'all can check out her Instagram. I'll just Google her name because I didn't know. Like I said, when I saw when I saw this clip, I would just try to find out who this chick was. But she is OK here, right here. This is her, I believe, her husband right here. So it's interesting. <laughs> Multicultural with a uh, Asian uh, husband. It is what it is. So anyway, family, leave your comments down below. Let me know what you guys think. All right, family, until next time, Chauncey, a.k.a. The Black Separatist, signing out. Peace.